Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the third step is seed formation. Now how will a seed be formed? Because seed is something which we are all aware of. You would have heard that if you grow a plant in your house, sometimes you buy seeds from the market. So when you put the seed under the soil, a new plant comes out of that seed. Right? So that means the seed has the capability to give rise to a new plant. So how is that seed formed? So that seed is the result of sexual reproduction in plants. So zygote is formed. We are clear to that. Now we will see how seed will be formed after the zygote formation. Now the zygote will re divide repeatedly to form embryo. So zygote was single cell. There was only one cell in zygote. But this one cell will divide repeatedly. So cell divisions will occur. As a result, many cells will be formed. And this multi-celled uh, organism is called embryo. So the zygote will turn into an embryo. Right? Now this embryo plus the endosperm, which I talked about in the previous slide, they together form the seed. So here we told this was the zygote. This was the zygote and this was the endosperm, right? So this zygote will now get converted into the embryo. So this was my zygote and this was the endosperm, right? So this zygote will undergo repeated division and it will become embryo. So this embryo and this endosperm together will form the seed. So this is this is the embryo, this green colored structure is embryo. So the zygote, which was a small structure here, will undergo many divisions and it will form a multi-celled embryo. And this embryo plus the endosperm, here you see the yellow colored structure. So the embryo plus endosperm will together form the seed. Now ovule develops a thick coat and forms seed. So what is ovule? Here also ovule was nothing but zygote plus and it was containing the zygote and the endosperm. So here the ovule is containing the embryo and the endosperm. So this becomes the, so the ovule becomes the seed. And what happens to the ovary? The ovary ripens to become the fruit. So the ovule now turns into a seed. So ovule, what was it? It was nothing but a circular structure inside which was present the zygote. So now that zygote converted into embryo by repeated division. So now what do you have inside the ovule? We have an embryo and the endosperm, right? So this embryo and endosperm is the seed. So ovule now becomes the seed. So just for the protection of the seed, there is a seed coat. So this seed coat, it is a tough covering which ensures protection to the seed. So it keeps the seed well protected inside. And the ovary, that is this whole structure, this whole you know, spherical swollen structure, this ripens into a fruit. So this becomes a fruit. So now you can imagine this structure very similar to any fruit which we eat. For example, you would have seen apple. So apple is the fruit. Now inside the apple you would have seen small seeds. Right? So that is how it is. So that apple is basically formed, the fruit which you see, which we actually eat. That is nothing, that was initially the ovary. So even if you look at that plant, there would have been some flowers. So the flowers would have undergone this kind of reproduction as a result of which the seed and the fruit is formed. Now after the fruit is consumed, the seed is left behind and that seed is capable of reproduction. It is capable of giving rise to a new plant. So this is how a seed looks like. So if you only look at the structure of a seed, it will look somewhat like this. Now, if you try to understand what is there inside a seed that it is capable of giving rise to a new plant. Now, if you see the internal structure of a seed, you will see that the seed has a plumule, a radical and cotyledon. Now, what are these? Plumule is nothing but a tiny shoot. Plumule is a tiny shoot. So this is the plumule, the upper part. Now as these seed, when you put this seed under the soil, put some water, what happens? It starts getting minerals. So this tiny shoot starts rising high, starts growing. Similarly, this radical is nothing but 
a tiny root. So when it gets minerals and all other nutrients, it starts growing like roots. What are the cotyledons? Cotyledons are nothing but the organs which store food. Because for this, for any or living organism to grow, it needs energy and energy comes from food. So even this seed, in order to grow, it needs some food. So the food comes from cotyledons. Now, the seed can have one cotyledon. It can also have two cotyledons. We have already spoken about monocots and dicots, right? So monocots are those plants which have, whose seeds have one cotyledon. Dicots are those plants whose seeds have two cotyledons. In case you want to know more detail, please refer to diversity in living organisms of class 9th. Okay, so here you understand how a seed is formed. So you see everything is happen, happening stepwise. It's one after another. First, pollination. So the pollen grains will reach the stigma. Second is fertilization. So pollen grain will travel from stigma to the ovary. It will fuse with the egg and a zygote will be formed. Third step is zygote will divide repeatedly and it will form an embryo. So the ovule which is containing the embryo will become the seed and the ovary will become the fruit. So now the seed is capable of giving rise to a new plant. Why? Because the seed's internal structure consists of a tiny shoot called plumule and a tiny root called radical and its food storage is stored in leaf-like structures called cotyledons. Clear? So now the question is when will the seed become active? That means when will the seed give rise to a new plant under favorable conditions? So what happens under unfavorable conditions? So the seed will remain dormant during the unfavorable condition. That means the seed will not be active. It will just remain like this. It will not give rise to a new plant. Now the question is what happens in favorable condition? So we know, we all know that it will give rise to a new plant. So that is going to be the last step. That is germination. That means the uh, growth of a plant from a seed is known as germination. It is the development of a seedling from a seed. Seedling is a very, very tiny plant. So it's, this is how germination will happen. This is the seed. This is the internal structure of the seed. Now, when it is put under favorable conditions, you know what is favorable condition? That means, example, you put the soil under the soil, give it some water. So now the conditions are favorable for the growth of the seed. So a small seedling will Arise. So here you see this is the small root, this is a small shoot and gradually this will give rise to a bigger plant. So this radical will give rise to bigger roots and it will grow as the plant grows. So again when the plant grows, the plant will bear buds, it will bear flowers. So when it will have flowers, the flowers will again undergo sexual reproduction. So again, zygote will be formed, embryo will be formed and again the entire process will keep on continuing. So this is all about the sexual reproduction in plants. So the reproductive part in a plant is flower. So if there is no flower, there will be no sexual reproduction. Right? So this was all about sexual reproduction in plants. So let us have a quick overview. Let us have a quick overview of the entire cycle. So which was the reproductive part of a plant? It was the flower. So it all started with the flower. So inside the flower we have the male gametes that is pollen grains and the female gamete that is the egg. So what happens at the first stage of reproduction? Pollination. So in pollination what will happen? The male gametes that is the pollen grains will be transferred to the female part of the flower that is to the stigma. So now the pollen grains are in the female part. What was the next step? Next step was fertilization. So in this step the pollen grains will actually reach the ovary of the flower and it will fuse with the egg and as a result zygote will be formed. So now once the zygote is formed, after that what happens? The zygote will divide repeatedly and it will become an embryo. So now once the embryo is formed, the ovule will convert itself into a seed. So seed formation will take place. Right? Now once the seed is formed, the seed will remain inactive during the unfavorable conditions. 
but when favorable conditions are present the seed will develop into a seedling and the seedling will develop into a bigger plant so the next step would be germination that is formation of seedling from the seed now once a seedling is formed again that seedling will grow and it will form a bigger plant so when a plant grows again the plant will have flower so when it has flowers again it will have the male and female gametes again pollination will happen again fertilization seed formation formation germination and so on so this cycle will keep on continuing in this fashion right and that is how sexual reproduction also will keep happening in plants thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again